There's the bell work, one, two, and three. Take a minute, see if you can do them, all right? One minute, go. All right, there's those three answers right there. Uh, remember these three relationships as well. Vertical angles, it means that the two are the same, so you'd equate these two and then solve for x. Complementary is when the two add up to 90 degrees. So you'd have to take the 3x plus 1, add 9x minus 7, and that equals 90 degrees, then you solve for x. Or part 3 where it's supplementary, it's similar to what we did in number 2. It's just now uh, what you get from angle A and B, you have to add those together, but it equals 180 degrees now. So vertical angles, if we look at uh, just kind of a diagram, generally speaking, Right, you, usually you're looking at two lines. It doesn't really matter if there's more lines coming out, right? But it's angles that are through the vertex. And the vertex is where the two lines intersect, right? So you'd say this angle would be vert vertical with this one because they're through the vertex. And that straight line right there, okay? And that also means that these two angles in red are also vertical. And yeah, again, just like I said before, it, like if there's a line coming out right there, Still, you'd say, well, the full red angle and this full red angle, they're still vertical. And uh, again, the unique thing about vertical angles is that they're equal, which is why in this example, you'd say 3x plus 1 equals 9x minus 7, which allows you to solve for that x value. So here's our objective for today. I can find the area of triangles and quadrilaterals. We'll talk about quadrilaterals here in a second, but uh, take 30 seconds and copy this down on the classwork, please. Now, remember with triangles, right, tri is three, okay? But remember, it's like a triangle. You couldn't say, well, it just means that you got three sides because that has three sides. It's, but it's not a triangle. It's a very, very good-looking letter, though. So uh, remember, it needs to close, right? It needs to be a three-sided shape that closes like this. And, yes, you can be as critical as you want about my drawings. I didn't close it right there, but I meant to, all right? So uh, don't make this more complicated than it needs to be and just be like, yeah, he meant to close. Yes, I did. Okay, thank you. If you get real picky about it, there you go. So that's three, three-sided closed shape. Quad, though, is four, okay? So very common quadrilateral would be a square. And yes, you can be critical if you want. I, I did my best to make those side lengths the same, okay? So squares, rectangles, those are the two most common types of quadrilaterals. We're going to look at some others today as well. But remember, it's a four-sided shape that it just needs to close, okay? Well, does that mean that there are some that don't close? Well, they're just not quadrilaterals. You can have a four-sided shape, I suppose, like this one. But see how it didn't close? Now, then it's not a quadrilateral. It's that, it's that simple. Okay. But we need this terminology down, this vocabulary, so that if I say quadrilateral in the future, uh, hopefully in your brain it kind of just happens, and you don't have to think, how many sides is a quadrilateral? Hmm, I wonder. It's, it's four-sided. Okay. Now, before we get into some of these quadrilaterals and triangle stuff, uh, we're going to be looking at area, just like we saw in the objective. So area, I, I guess I will relate this to a rectangle. Like if you saw a rectangle like this, okay, and I said, how do you find the area of a rectangle? Well, that means you take the length, which we use an L to denote, and width, which we use a W to denote. And in order to find the area, you'd say, I'm just going to take the length and multiply it by the width, like this, okay? Now, that's something that you probably already knew, and that's great, okay? But what about the label for these? Well, I'm just going to make these in units because I don't know exactly how long they are. U in green, what I put there, stands for unit. It's not woo and loo, okay? It's width in units, length in units, right? Remember, math is kind of its own language here, so we have to be able to read it properly. Now, along the lines of the labels for these, if I said units, just think about this. You'd take one set of units for the length, I'll use the same color. One set of units for the length and one set of units for the width, right? And really what you're doing is multiplying these. And we, we've already seen what happens when you have repeated multiplication like this. What you end up with is the base, which in this case is units, 
and you got two of them right there, so it's units to the power of two. We don't actually say units to the power of two, though, okay? This two, we say it's squared units. So you could say it's units squared if you wanted. Or some people say um, square units. Either one of these will work. Okay, and you may wonder, hmm, why do they say squared or square units? It's because if uh, when we took the length and width, what we really did is we split this rectangle up into smaller, I say more manageable squares, right? And yes, these aren't going to be perfect squares. I apologize in advance for my shortcomings. But we would split it up this way for the width, and then we would split it vertically for the length. And then we would say, how many of these squares are there? Then you could count them if you wanted to. Um, but of course, that's why we multiply, because it's simplified addition that way. Okay? So these would be square in units. For example, if I said the width and length were in feet, each of these squares would have lengths of feet and feet. Square feet. You see that? Why, why is this important? It's because, uh, especially when you're working with area or any type of measurement, it's crucial that you label your answers, okay? And that way, if, if you say it's the answer is 25, people may ask you, 25 what? And in mathematics, we want that to be extraordinarily exact, so we label them, okay? I use the rectangle specifically because it's convenient, but it is possible if you were to look at a triangle like this, and even with circles, by the way, um, what would happen is you'd say, well, it kind of lies on a grid like this, and then you can split it up, <clears throat> excuse me, into squares this way. And then you could actually figure out, if you did that, how many squares the triangle takes up. And that's kind of our objective today is, well, how, how do you figure out those values? We're going to give you some shortcuts today. So, yeah, and that is a possibility. In the past, you may have been told this was uh, height, and then the length is the base. Like, uh, the area of a rectangle is base times height. Okay, that's fine. And it still works, of course. Um, be careful, though, because if you talk to, like, big-time math nerds and you said the length is the shorter of two sides, like they gave you two lengths or two dimensions for a rectangle, and if you said that the length was the shorter side, just know that that math person is going to lose sleep. Okay? It's like if you want to torture math people, just tell them, hey, the, the length is the shorter of the two sides, and they're going to freak out, man. They will freak out hard. Parallelograms. This is a new word for us, I think. Well, there is a word that's familiar in here, though. Parallel. And we talked about parallel, last, parallel lines last time, right? And say, hey, these two lines, these two lines in green are parallel. Um, if you look past my horrible drawings. And then we said, hey, if you got a transversal that goes through these, then what happens? It creates um, angle relationships that are congruent which are, uh, well, they're very important for us, okay? So a parallelogram, though, is when you have a four-sided shape, so it is a quadrilateral, but it's going to have not only this one set of green parallel lines, but also another set of parallel lines that makes it up. So I'd look at what I'm going to put here in purple, and I would say that right there is a parallelogram. And this creates even more unique scenarios, right? You'd say, oh, well, this corresponding angle is now congruent. And these corresponding angles are congruent, or these alternate exterior angles are congruent, or these alternate interior angles are congruent. You see what I'm saying? Um, so just to show you a little bit more uniqueness, right? It would say that the green and the blue angles right there that makes up a straight angle. So what about that other corner of the parallelogram? Well, I'd say these two are alternate interior, and since we got parallel lines, they are also congruent. But then the second blue angle and this third blue angle that I've drawn now, which is the other corner of the parallelogram, they're also congruent because they're now corresponding. See that? So you get opposite angles on parallelograms that uh, that are congruent. But remember, for our objective, we're really looking at the area of these, okay? So I'm gonna see if I can clean this up a little bit. 
Now you may be thinking that's uh, not, uh, not a very good parallelogram. Actually, that's one of my better ones. So uh, here's the way the parallelogram works. Now, again, you should be pretty familiar with finding area, and that's one of our objectives, right? Area of rectangles and squares. So we would say, can I relate a parallelogram to a square? Specifically the area, right? And when I say area, I'm, I'm saying the surface, right? It's two-dimensional length and width, two dimensions right here. So there, there's a few ways to go about this, and the answer is yes, you could change this now. You could actually take a parallelogram and make a rectangle out of it pretty quick. If, and I'm going to see if the technology will let me do this, if I took this triangle right here, that's not too bad, and uh, let's see if I can separate this stuff. Oh, it worked. See that right there? Hmm. If I cut that off and then I just kind of rotate it like this. Well, no, I did that backwards. Eh? I should have just <laughs> moved it over. I took this one. I'm going to cut it off and move it over here, which really means that uh, this other part, it just doesn't exist anymore, right? Because I moved it and it's that green part. Okay, so now what kind of shape do we have? Well, if I'd drawn it better, you'd say a rectangle probably. But that's a rectangle. See that? So when finding the area of a parallelogram, if we go back to what we started with, which was the purple shape, what you're going to do is, and uh, yeah, one of you already described it, is you're going to take the base, which would be the full length of, we'll say the bottom. It doesn't matter because the top is also the same length. Opposite sides of parallelograms are the same, just like there with rectangles. But the other value that you need is the height. So usually what they'll do is they'll show some kind of like right angle mark right here. And so it, it, we're not looking at the slant value of this, this length or this one. We're just looking at the height of the parallelogram uh, because that's how, it, that's how it made this uh, rectangle right here, right? So let's say the height, and again, that's the importance of seeing that right angle right there. It's going to make, it's going to make the height, okay? And that's how we pretty much get that rectangle. So what does that mean for the area of the parallelogram? It means that what you're going to do is you're going to take the base value and multiply it by the height value. And yes, from time to time, you'll see this is kind of like a dashed line, something like this. Maybe it's dotted. We'll see. All right, something else about parallelograms, real quick, okay? And yeah, you could relate this to uh, rectangles. Okay. Well, what if you cut uh, a parallelogram in half? And I'm talking about cutting in half from one corner to the opposite corner. Okay. Well, that would be like cutting it. This one makes it kind of convenient. Well, if you cut this out, then what shape would you get? You see it's a triangle right there. Now, you should be asking yourself, well, how much of that parallelogram is that green triangle? It's exactly half of it, right? So as it turns out, if you wanted the area of a triangle, I put the triangle in the bottom right there, this would read the area of a triangle. It would be the same as taking the base of the parallelogram, right? Like saying, hey, you just find the area of the par parallelogram that the triangle would make, but you're going to cut it in half. If you wanted to, you could, uh, you could write this as dividing by 2. And yeah, of course, there's several different ways you could show this divide by 2, but both of these work. Now that we have that formula, let's look at these six triangles, okay, real quick. I'm going to give you guys two minutes, two minutes, and try this out. See if you can not only find the base and height of the triangle, but see if you can find the area of that triangle as well, all right? Two minutes. Do as many as you can, and then we're going to go over them, all right? Two minutes, go. Just as you're checking your answers, remember, if you make mistakes, that's okay, right? That's how we're going to learn from this stuff, and, and then hopefully we'll know what not to do, perhaps, in the future. But if you got it all down, that's good as well. So let's look at triangle A, and just showing that we can relate this to a rectangle. Let me see if I can draw this out and then show how it would make a rectangle on this. So I've traced over A, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this 
triangle and flip it like this. See that? And now what do I got? I got a rectangle. But remember, I'm just looking at the triangle A there, which means it's half of that rectangle. So as long as I could find the length and width of this rectangle, then I can find the area of the triangle that's made up from that rectangle. So I'd say, okay, what is the length of this uh, triangle right there? That's uh, one, two, three, four, five. I got five boxes there. So that you could say that's the base, um, and height doesn't really matter which is which. I'm going to say, well, you know, I'll say the height is five. That seems like it make more sense here. And then the base. How long is the base? Is two, right? And again, these are just in units. We don't know how long these are, centimeters, millimeters, who knows, okay? But the area for this one then, for triangle A, would be base, two, times the height of five, which is 10. Now, that's, that's if it was a rectangle, right? But we still need to cut that in half. So don't forget to divide that by two. 10 divided by two is five. Now, again, this isn't showing the units on this one, so I, I, you can put units to the power of 2 if you like. Um, I recommend doing that just so we know the difference between the two 5s that we see. And yeah, you could put units on the 5 and the 2 as well. Okay. Now, B, this one, if you flipped it just like we did with uh, triangle A, then what would happen is you'd end up with a parallelogram, but that's not a rectangle. So I would look at the base on this one, and uh, the height is important to be able to find on, on triangles like this. It's just, I would go to the tip here and then just kind of follow that line down. And since this is on a grid, I just know that that's already a 90 degree angle. They, they kind of put one in here with this box, but it's bigger than you'd expect it to be. So I'd say the base on triangle B here is one, two, three boxes right there. Okay, so I've got three units there. And then the height of this, yeah, that's only one box. So one unit there. And to find the area of triangle B, I would take the base, three, and multiply it by the height, which is one, which would give me, hmm, oh, I gotta divide that by two. Don't forget to divide it. Let's divide that by two. You can put the decimal if you'd like. I'm just gonna use the fraction on this one, three halves. And yeah, remember, you can put that in the calculator, just use the N over D button, or if you just divide it by two, it may have given you 1.5. Okay, so I'm gonna say 1.5 square units is the area. When I look at the base and height of a triangle, what I want to see is where that 90 degree angle is made, because remember, uh, the triangles are really half of some type of parallelogram. So if I can find where that 90 degree angle is from one side to I'm going to say one of the tips. That's going to be the height. So on this one that we just did, right, I'd say, I would, for me anyways, I would say that the top here is kind of the top tip of this one. And I'm looking again for where I can just kind of trace that back down to the other side, which then makes that 90 degree angle. And so the, the two lengths that make that 90 degree angle will be the base and the height. So right here was this bottom, which I'm calling the base. Uh, that's one of the lengths. And then the other one that goes from that length up to that tip would be the other, well, length, which is what I'm calling the height in this case. And if you see a 90 degree angle like we did in triangle A, I mean, they didn't show it right, but it's there then you may have known, okay, well then directly that, that told us that the base here and the height were made up of the two lines that make this 90 degree angle. So that's really what you're trying to focus on is where is the 90 degree angle between, I'm, I'm going to say the top tip of the triangle and then the other length. So triangle C, uh, again, we're looking for that 90 degree angle. So again, if you can just follow one of the tips, and use a straight line, vertical or horizontally, that goes up or down or left and right to one of the other lengths. I'd say it's this one right here, okay, which makes a 90 degree angle with this line. So the other two side lengths of this triangle, I'm not really too concerned about because it's the base and the height that that's all that I need in order to find the area of a 
triangle. So I'd say, well, what is the, what is the base length on this one? Well, I count four squares there, so it's four units. So that's what I'm going to put in the box. The height, one, two, three, four units as well. So that's the height there. And uh, then to find the area of triangle C, we would take the base, which is four, and the height, which is four. And yeah, we're just going to divide this by two. So four times four is 16, just by order of operations. I'm not really using a calculator at this point, but uh, 16 divided by two then gives us uh, eight. So that's an area of eight square units. And then D as well, we're going to do this exactly the same way. I'll use different colors though. So I go from the top tip and I follow the line down, which I can see makes a 90 degree angle with this bottom length right here. That, that shows me what the base and the height are. And the base on this one in green there, one, two, three, three units. And the height, one, two units. Well, what I need now is the area. So I know I'm going to have to divide by two, so I'm going to take the base of two, uh, three, rather, and the height, which was at two units. I multiply those two, three and two, and then divide by two. And yeah, again, you can put this directly into the calculator. It would give you the area of three square units. So three units squared. So triangle E, this one uh, creates a unique scenario because it's, it's very different. This one's an obtuse triangle, which we haven't done an example of yet for area. But remember, we're just looking for where um, the tip of the triangle would come down to meet one of the lengths. And so, I, again, I would say, well, let's look at the top tip right here, okay? And I'd say, okay, let's, let's follow this down. But see how it doesn't really meet that base of this triangle? Well, it's just that what that means is we, we could just extend the base. Now, when I extend it, I'm not saying that I'm extending the actual base of the triangle. I'm just extending that line so that I can see where that 90 degree angle is, which is right there. Okay. So that tells me the height, which is two squares tall. But the base, again, I'm not counting both squares that I just extended. I'm just looking at the base of the triangle itself, which is this length right here. That's only one square long. So if I wanted the area of triangle E, I take the base, one, multiply it by the height, two, and then I'm going to divide this by two. The answer that I get from this is the area, one times two is two, two divided by two is one, one square unit. So be careful on these types because F is going to work pretty much exactly the same way. You'd say, I'm going to follow this tip, I'm going to come down, and uh, until I have to, and yeah, I'm going to extend this line, but that creates a 90 degree angle here again, okay? So then that tells us what the height is and the base. The base on this triangle, just the triangle part, one, two, three squares, so that's three units. And then the height, one, two, three, four units tall. So if I want the area, which I know I'm going to divide by two, I take the base of three and the height of four, and multiply those two, and then divide by two. Three times four is 12. 12 divided by two is six, six square units. So now that we have that, I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the table. The E had a base of one unit, a height of two, and then the area was one square unit. F, this one had a base of three, a height of four, which gave us an area of six square units. So how do you find the area of a triangle? Again, this is this showing three different ways, which also means that it doesn't really matter which way you like. Just like one of the ways, hopefully, okay? Uh, but you can see the top one that we have here, one half times B times H. It's on that poster that's just right above the projection. Triangle equals one half B times H. Base times height. So yeah, here's our parallelograms. And we've already seen the formula for the area of a parallelogram, right? Let's put parallelogram.
And remember, all you're going to do is you're going to take the base value and then multiply it by the height. And again, the height, what we're looking for is where it makes 90 degrees, some line that makes a 90 degree angle with the base specifically. Okay. Now, A and B, these ones, these, by the way, yeah, rectangles are parallelograms. It's two sets of parallel lines, just like squares are. So when we look at A, right here, I'd say the base, again, you could use length and width like we did. But the base here, I'd say, is one unit. And then the height here would be the other side length because, again, that creates the 90 degree angle there. One, two, three units tall. And then for the area of this parallelogram, which is really just a rectangle, base, one, times height, three, one times three is three. So, again, that'd be three square units on this one. So, rectangle B, again, we got a base here of uh, one, two, three units. And then a height of one, two units. And again, why is that the height? Because it creates a 90 degree angle right there. So it's a three by two dimension rectangle. So if I wanted the area, I take the base three times the height two. Three times two is six square units. So yeah, we just saw the base is three, the height is two, and the area is six. Three times two is six. And then see, now we're looking at a, a well, I would say it's a regular parallelogram, but it's not a rectangle, okay? So I'd be looking at the base, which is this, I'm going to say is this length, how, how long is that? One, two, three, four, five. That's five units as the base. Put it in the table. But I still need the height, right? So I'd say, I just need anywhere in this opposite base, which is the top, I'm going to say, like this one. And I'd say, I'm just going to follow the line straight down. And that, see how that creates a 90 degree angle here? Well. What's the length of that height right there? It's two squares tall. So that's a five by two parallelogram. So if I want the area, I'm going to take five, the base, and the height of two, and multiply them. And I get an area of 10 on this one. All right, what about D? Same idea for this one. The base, again, for this one, it's just not difficult to see, hopefully. But I can see that it's also four units long, the base. And then we, can, we just need to find any line that'll create a 90 degree angle with that base. And uh, I, you know, I'll choose this one, just showing you that it doesn't matter. And yeah, see that 90 degree angle right there? Well, how long is that height? One, two, three. So I just saw the base was four, the height was three. So what is the area? Well, we take the base of 4 and the height of 3, just multiply them, get 12. So if we looked at E, what would you, what would you say that the base is on E? 2. Yep, 2 units. What's the height? 2 units. Yeah, and uh, in unique scenarios like this parallelogram, where the height and the base are the same, it's a square. When it creates 90 degree angles as well. So if I wanted the area of that, I'd take the base of 2, the height of 2. 2 times 2 is 4. So the area of that parallelogram, which is also a square, is 4. And we'll do F as well, but again, this is kind of like those obtuse triangles. Um, I'm going to have to extend the line in order to make a 90. Well, I guess I don't really have to. I could use this one. Right, and that creates a 90 degree angle at the base right there. So I'd say, well, how long was the base? It was one square. And then the height here is showing two squares. So a base of one, a height of two. The area then is base one times the height two, two square units. So how do you find the area of a rectangle? Base times height. We said length times width. It's exactly the same thing. Uh, how do you find the area of a square? Well, you take the side and multiply it by the other side because they're the same. That's why it's showing side and side. I, wouldn't bre uh, I would not abbreviate that unless you're going to use exponents. And then number six for parallelograms, again, base and height. Again, the height thing, we're looking for that 90 degree angle because you know, sometimes for those, those uh, the height is going to be
kind of on the inside of that parallelogram stuff. All right, what is a trapezoid? Well, the only unique thing about a trapezoid, and it is a quadrilateral because it has four sides and it closes, is that it only has one set of parallel lines. So I'd say uh, these two green lines are parallel, right? And the other sides don't really matter how they work as long as they close the shape, right? Like you could say it's a blue one and this red one, okay? Sometimes you may see it more like, like this right here. And uh, that would also work. Let's see if I can clean that up. See that? But as long as you have one set of parallel lines, in this case the green ones, then it's considered a trapezoid. Well, trapezoids then, uh, what do we do about finding the area of trapezoids? There's several different ways to find the area of a trapezoid. Um, for kind of, I don't know, unusual ones like this, like the red and purple links, I would say that they're not really related. What you end up doing really is you, you kind of, I don't know, we kind of keep track of the original size here of this thing. But in addition to that, what I do is I would take half of that, and I'm going to cut it specifically horizontally like this, and I would look at this side, and let's see if I can break this up. It looks like I might not have to. Let's see if it'll let me take this. Oh, there we go. That's working. So I take that, I took this half, right, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it, and then what happens is um, I can connect these, these two sides right here, okay? So, now, what we end up with is a really long, and now this is a parallelogram, because this side is now parallel to this side, right? It was moved over here, and then this side inside connects these two. So we end up with a really long parallelogram, but in, relation to, uh, in relationship to what we had before, really, it's, um, it's only half of that, what we would consider this um, big, big one, okay? Because... This half now is no longer there. So what we would have in red would be the construction of a new parallelogram from what we started with. And you can do this with any, any trapezoid. Of course, there's other ways to do it as well, but this, is, this way is very consistent no matter how the other two non-parallel sides are drawn. So really, to find the area of a trapezoid, area of a trapezoid, just think about what we just did, okay? We said, hey, we're going to start, or we would have ended with uh, uh, a parallelogram. So that means you would have taken the base. I'll put this in red right here. You would have multiplied it by the height, which would have been right here. And you would have divided it by 2. But the problem with this is that the two bases are not the same length. So what we do is we say, see this, the red side right here, the bottom, it's actually made up of this blue side, and I'm going to call it this green side right here, which was this side. So we actually have to add those together in this one. So this is going to show a little bit different than what you see on the poster. We have to take one base and add it to the other base. Usually they would call this base one and base two. I'm color coding this so we can see the difference though. All right. So you have to add those together and then multiply it by the height and then you can divide by two. Thank you. Now we're not going to ask you if you can make uh, or actually derive these formulas, but it may be helpful to see where they come from because then you don't, you don't, if you can memorize that, you don't really need to memorize the formula. You can just construct your own. So for these three examples, I got uh, trapezoid A and we can see the parallel sides. It's just the top and bottom. What I'm going to do is I would look at the base. That's why it's asking for the two bases in the height, by the way. But I'd say this, this length here, this is the base 1, I will call it. And how long is that? 1, 2, 3, 4. Well, base 2, it wants that as well. I'll say that's the top. Okay, because again, I would, I would flip that over, and then it would create half of that uh, parallelogram right there. How long is that purple length? 1, 2. So it's two units long. And then what's the height? Well, again, I, I need to make a 90-degree angle at the top 
and the bottom. I'm just going to do with that line right there. See that 90 degree angle? How long is that? One, two, three. So I want the area of um, trapezoid A. So I'd say the area is going to be the two bases. I need to add those together. So that'd be four and the two. Let's go ahead and add those together. And then whatever I get from that addition, I would multiply it by the height. And then I know to cut it in half, just like we saw when we derived the formula. So this one, again, you can tie this directly into the calculator, but 4 times 2 is 6. 6 times 3 is 18 divided by 2, 9. So the area on this one would be 9 square units. And yeah, that means also if you were to construct this into a rectangle, you would have counted 9 squares on the inside. So uh, trapezoid B, I got a base. One, two, three, four units long. I got a height. I'm sorry, the base two, rather. That's two units long again. So base one is four. Base two is two. The height here, we can see this, this line actually creates this side of it, creates a 90 degree angle. So we can just count this one. One, two, three, four. So when I want the area, I take two bases and add them together, which I got four and two in this one. Four and two. I need to multiply that by the height, which is four in this case, and then just divide it all by two. So four plus two is six right here, times the four, that's 24. Now divide by two, that's 12. Again, the calculator would do that for you as well. And then this last one, trapezoid C, we got the base one, one, two, three, four, five, six units long. Base 2, which is really the top, is 1, 2, 3 units. And the height, anywhere that I can make a 90 degree angle with the top and bottom, the two parallel sides, is the height. 1, 2 units. So that's going to fill in the table. It's a base 1 of 6. The top or the base 2 is 3. A height of 2. So then what is our area? Well, we've got to add the two bases which in this case is 6 and 3. Multiply that by 2 and divide by 2. And yes, some of you shorthand would say, look, I can, Mr. Sal, I know I can just cancel those 2s as a phantom 1, and that would work because then 6 plus 3 is 9. Whether you did that or not, you'll still get 9, by the way. 9 square units. Right, you could say, well, order of operations, 6 plus 3 is 9, times 2 is 18, then divide by 2 is 9. So you end up with 9 either way. So here is the area of a trapezoid, but written in four different ways. And again, uh, technically you don't have to memorize it in class because I got that poster. But um, again, you, you could see like we derived it. You can just cut it in half. You should be able to cut it in half and then arrange it so that it creates a parallelogram. But then, and that's why it's adding the two bases right here. Again, you don't have to memorize all four. Like if you, if you made yourself very familiar with one, that would be the most helpful. No matter how, again, it, this gives you some options. Just choose one that you like the best. So here's our objective. I can find the area of triangles and quadrilaterals.